Would you believe that it is now 15 years since an English rock group called The Beatles became a smash hit in the United States? They were already a smash hit in Liverpool. And it's now almost 10 years since The Beatles broke up. Since the breakup, Paul McCartney has been the most successful of the four. In fact, he's been more successful than anyone in the history of popular music. Well, Paul was honored for his achievements last week in London, where he talked with Geraldo Rivera. You, 10 years is a long time, but over that time, nobody, absolutely nobody, has forgotten the Beatles. Their legend has only continued to grow, and for the best of reasons. They were an amazing phenomenon, one that described and defined a turbulent but vital time in our history. The group was great because each of the individual players, in his own way and with his own style, was great. John Lennon, unfortunately, has temporarily dropped out of the public spotlight. As for the other three, George and Ringo have continued their individual careers, but without the creative and financial success they enjoyed with the Beatles. That leaves Paul McCartney, and his story, as you'll see, is very different from his former colleagues. He had a lot to say about his life with and without the Beatles. It's rock and roll done with style and a sense of humor. And it's a perfect reflection of the personality and the enormous talent of the man who writes as well as performs all of his own songs. Paul and Linda McCartney, his wife and fellow band member, were in London last week to receive a very special recognition. Well, it's great, isn't it? Wow. Great pleasure on behalf of the Guinness Book of Records. McCartney was officially honored as the most successful musical composer of all times, having written 43 songs that have sold over a million copies. He's also now the most successful recording artist, with total sales of over 200 million records. Well, I'm hopeless at these kind of speeches and stuff, so I won't do one except thanks very much, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming, and thank you for this. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Terrific. Love you. You know, I was surprised. I knew that you had sold a whole of a lot of records, and a lot of them were in, went gold and platinum and all those other colors that they have in the music yeah. business. But uh, I had no idea they were quite so many, and oh. that you were the number it's one it's ever. I mean, it's quite an impressive achievement. It was pretty amazing, because I'd never counted up, you know. And to have them just sort of put it down like that, you are definitely the one who's done it. Oh. It's uh, just flabbergasting. So you can still be motivated by achievements like that? Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's the big motivation, really. You know, it used to be just money, you know, um, and I suppose now it's like kind of, kind of achievements and stuff. But uh, it's just great. I mean, you'd like it, wouldn't you? Of course. So he can still be inspired by his professional achievements. But McCartney's basic motivation is his family and their country life in Scotland, far from the unblinking attention he's experienced now for the last 15 years. Our kids are like, I mean, I think of them as ordinary kids, obviously. Um, and, you know, the hams, when the music comes on, they get leaping around and dancing. But I've been, I've, it's tempting in a way, because you sort of think, wait a minute, you know, I could send her to dancing school, or, ooh, that one to make a good recorder player or something. But uh, the way it is for us, it's not like it is if we were just ordinary parents and we'd want to sort of push them into things. If we push them into stuff, we know they'll get there kind of thing, and it might be false. And then they've got to deal with that the rest of their lives. So the way we're doing it is if any of them wants to do it, they can do it like I do. The way McCartney did it, first with the Beatles, he did it first for the last 10 years with Wings, is with original and very well-played music. Another extraordinary thing about McCartney is consistency, not only in terms of his music, but also in terms of temperament and lifestyle. He's never come close to self-destructing. I just finished uh, a really extensive investigation into Elvis Presley's last year. And, oh, yeah. you know, we really established that he, like so many others, Keith Moon, I mean, you can go on forever, you know, mm -hmm. as well as I better, uh, died from an overdose of prescription medicine that he'd been taking over the years from doctors who would give him anything. And, and before that, I was talking to Greg Allman and, and Keith Richards and so many people. And the, and the question that comes to my mind, and maybe I half know the answer because I know Linda, is uh, how have you avoided the classical melancholy syndrome of self-destructive overindulgence? I never used to uh, take a lot of pills when people were taking pills, and they'd always say, what are you on? You know, and I'd be, yay, up there with him. So I, I never used to do it that much. Um, 
And I suppose when we got married, kind of, we were a bit sort of against that, sort of an aspirin for a headache and an aspirin for waking up in the sleep. We don't take sleeping pills and stuff, you know. And we sleep okay. Um, I've just been never into all of that, you know. A little bit here and there and stuff, but kind of really keeping my eye on it, and like anyone would with drink or something, you know. I kind of know the dangers of it, and uh, I don't overindulge that much. I suppose that's all it is, you know, just same as anyone else who isn't into it. That's a question of discipline, and how do you manage it when no, you... It just frightens me. I mean, you know, I, I just wouldn't ever like to get into that, because I know I'd be done in. McCartney's fantasies are woven from and around his music. Despite a relatively modest lifestyle, the McCartneys are enormously wealthy people. Aside from the millions Paul has earned as a singer and songwriter, he also owns the publishing rights to hundreds of other songs as well. In the last five years, his company has become the largest independent music publisher in the world, with an estimated worth of somewhere between 80 and 120 million dollars. Are you ever embarrassed by your wealth, your great success? Yes, occasionally. Because uh, I come from a council estate. And a council or? Estate. Like uh, council houses. Not poor people, but not well off. Public you didn't council, own your own house. Housing. Public housing. Right. There were a lot of people all lived together and stuff. So I'm, I'm from there, and my family never had any money. Um, so to have money, yeah, I'm not born to it at all. So. Um, Whenever anyone says, meh, you got too much money, yeah, you should pay, or you could give it all away or something, you know, that can make me feel a bit embarrassed, you know, because I don't really know what to say to them, except, well, look, you know, I didn't rip anyone off to get it, and uh, please let me have it, and uh, I do some good things, and, you know, that, that's, that's my only uh, refuge. But it does a bit embarrass me, yeah, because I just got, I suppose because I'm not used to it, and I haven't got that kind of, but I don't mind. I mean, it only embarrasses me a bit. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't uh, give up because of the embarrassment. Certainly. But it does a little bit embarrass me just because of where I'm from. You know, I was coming over and reading some of the clips in the, in the British newspapers. And here they've known you even longer than we all have in the good old US of A. And despite the fact that you have received 17 gold albums for Wings and another one with Billy Preston, they still, the, the, the the adjective used to describe you is still ex-Beatle, former Beatle, Paul McCartney of the Beatle. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I think that will go on forever. What really happened between you and John? Um, the group broke up. Um, it wasn't particularly between me and John. It was just between all of the group. I mean, you know, we, we started off as lads from Liverpool and all got together, as you know, uh, probably. I read and, my um, we had a great success and kind of all enjoyed doing it. And in the end, though, uh, we were always, if we argued, we'd always argue about music or something like that. It would never be a really sort of big argument. Pretty much everything was taken care of in companies and stuff. But I think the crunch came when what we started to argue about was business, the Apple business. And you'd get one viewpoint from so-and-so and so-and-so's -and -so lawyer and so-and-so's. And everyone was represented on all these sides. And I think that just when the game changed to a money game instead of a music game, uh, it, was, it was one we didn't have a framework to exist in. This is my theory, anyway. Uh, I think we were not out of our depth, but it was a new game. And it got nasty. It got very nasty. And people were saying, well, if you're going to do that, I'm going to do this. And a lot of, there was a lot of playing around the back. It was just like your, your classic business maneuvers and everything. And lots of things went down. I think everyone sort of hurt each other sufficiently to just say, well, sod it all, we're going to break up. You know? Are there any circumstances under which you and the family... I suppose together? if the Beatles, all the other three, were really wild, keen to do it, and it looked like a real great thing to go and do, then there's like a real slim chance that I'd kind of say, yeah, OK. What is left for you now, then? Everything. Everything. What is it? Whatever was left is still left. Uh, just... Uh, yeah, just to have a good time and enjoy myself and bring up my kids and have them bring me up. Things like that, you know. That's all left. Uh, and there's millions of things on the music side left, but I can never think of them because I could never think of them in the first place. You know, I never realized where I was getting to. And I still don't know where I'm going. <laughs>